Welcome back to the Fear and Beer Podcast, where we discuss all things Halloween horror nights, horror movies, and just a little bit of beer. I'm Nick. And I'm Seamus. Like scary movies. Uh-huh. Here's Johnny. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. Do you miss me? Aren't you drinking? I never drink. Why? Before we get into tonight's episode, we want to remind all of those listening on Apple Podcasts to drop us a five-star review. It helps us grow as a podcast and build our audience. If you're listening on Spotify or any other platform, follow us, and don't forget to share with friends and family who might have a little bit of the strange in them as well. And while you're on those socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, be sure to find us, Fear and Beer Pod. Give us a like, share, and you can always message us. We'd love to interact with all you guys. Happy Monday. Weird. Fear and beer coming out on a Monday morning. This is different. That means we are in our final week to HHN. We are counting down the days. We just came off of our hot fantasy draft. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode on that second to last Sunday before football kicks off. That's why we try and time it around this time. But today we are going to be going into our HHN 31 hot takes. Now these are not scorching eyes. As soon as you hear them, these do not necess- yeah. these do not necessarily mean these are our hot takes. After we state these, we are going to go into a agree or disagree, and we'll kind of discuss these. But these were some just ideas that popped into my head and Seamus's head that well, we can. These are good discussion points because I think maybe people are thinking about these. Some of them we're going to lose audience members over these. I'm just saying, uh, only if we agree or disagree. Well, you be, you know, I mean, these did come from um from from your brain. So I mean, <laughs> you may not agree with them, but you did. You've thought about this in the past. I, oh, I did. The first um, one, you're gonna piss some people off. I'm just saying. Should we start off with that heavy hitter one? I guess. Oh well, I mean, it's the first in the list. Why not? Might as well. All right. So I just um, hit him over the head early. <laughs> Um, I will get into beer, um, not as much beer because I'm still drinking the one that I was drinking previously, which is on a much different episode. Uh, this is still Rusty Rail Brewing, Fog Monster, New England style IPA. Um, I was going to switch it up, but I, the episodes are running a little bit shorter, which is good. So you can listen to them in one day, but bad because I don't want to slam three beers on a Wednesday night. So <laughs> this is still the same beer I was drinking on our Friday episode. I know. It took me I'm still four cleansing. days to drink a beer. So four days. Um, yeah. So like I said, these are takes sort of hot takes. Um, oh, and we'll figure out if we takes. These are, these are going to burn somebody's mouth. Like these are like, these are like <laughs> hot pockets right out of the microwave. <laughs> hot takes. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, so we base these primarily on this year's event. Um, and, and we might throw some more in there later on. Um, that are more broad to HHN as a whole, but let's uh, let's get down to business and piss some people off. Hot take number one: Lil Boo is overused and being whored out by Universal for their benefit. Whoring out the little Boo, can you believe that? It's stolen the innocence of the event, and he's now at this point like, is it? Is he still a thing? Like, is that a? Is is Lil Boo like? That well now that he's not like one little pumpkin outside of like the heart of the event last year, and now he's on Everything. t-shirts, scare zone. He's a sellout on, on maps, hats, keychains. He's the back up in the, the stairway event. I mean, he's. I, they knew that like it was a a, a fun little thing, like little insidery thing. You know, the random people going to Horror Nights, you say, oh, Lil Boo, and they're not going to know what you're talking about. But that internal Horror Nights community knows Lil Boo. And do we completely agree with how how much they're just draining our money out of this is one little pumpkin that like, as a community, it organically grew. And, you know, you know, Universal had no clue that they were going to create this cash cow of a little decor item, but they did. So hot take number one, Lil Boo is overused and being whored out. Do you agree with that? Do you agree I if do he's overused at this, this point? I do not this hot take whatsoever. I do not so, consign well, this whatsoever. Yeah. Lil Boo will always, be, will always be the king or queen of the event. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many 
people think this take is right, which I can't imagine there's many people. I'm pretty sure there's already the pitchforks and the and the uh, the the torches are already out and they're coming for our heads as we speak. <laughs> um, but no, I don't think you, I don't I don't think it's overused. I think it's cool that they're finally recognizing it uh, as you know for what it is, and I think it's something that's crazy that the community made you know, really a, a, a relevant thing. Like, no, if it wasn't for the community, the little boo wouldn't even be, you know, a thing. A thing. So, so I think, I think it's cool. I'm glad they're finally using, using the, the kind of, kind of a, as like a mini mascot almost. Um, yeah. So I'm excited. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with this. I'm not even sure who would have actually said this and said, you know, said it with a straight face. It was like, I wholeheartedly 100% agree with this particular statement. I, Definitely agree with half of this. Oh boy, Lil Boo is definitely being hoard out. Um, is he overused at this point? No, I don't think so. Um, it's only been this one year, so we'll see how it kind of pans out in the future. But I mean, he is popping up in a lot of places for just a little pumpkin. I love him, and I love the name, Everybody, and I love his stupid little face. Study but, our faces, and when but, you get to the event and run into us. Remember who Nick is and remember who Seamus is because I do but not that consign little, this at all. That little pumpkin that could did and he found his way onto a plethora of merch and I think it's more of just like a, this was something that the community created and now it's like just turned into a absolute cash cow for It's taken Universal. on a mind of its own, definitely. Um, I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't personally consider it whoring it out um i don't think that's the right terminology for it i think they're they're running a Profiting. risk of overplaying it and making it played out in a way but i don't think that it is currently so if they do it the right way and do it smart i think that it's just a, a cool little mascot that the community helped create and can kind of stay that way but you're right i mean i think i think if they're not careful it could become that but is it doing it now or has it happened already i i, I don't think so I just wanted to start out hot, hot off the gate. You just want to start in a fight. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to fight anybody. <laughs> I enjoy everyone. Everyone is a friend to Seamus. So let's not fight Seamus when you see them. Oh, this will be a fun episode. All right. So you want to get the next one? Yeah. And I actually 100% agree with this particular statement. And I don't think that um, I don't think I'm being I, I, ironic at all with this. The weekend house will end up being the most. You put the most fun house. I would probably use the term most um, the most unique house, I guess, is the way I would put it. I don't think I don't like that because I think they're all going to be fun. I don't I don't think necessarily one is going to be more fun than the other. I just think that the weekend house is going to be the most interesting and unique and different. And, you know, it will not feel samey. It will not feel overused. It will not feel um, rehashed. Um, it won't feel like they're just borrowing things from previous from previous houses where another hot take. I think a lot of the other houses will have that feel some less than others. But I think with this one, it's going to be the most unique one and potentially could end up being um, my most my my favorite house by the end of the event. I can't say that for, for sure right now, but um, I don't know. I, I, I like those weird esoteric acid trip type houses. And I think this is what this is going to be. So yeah, I would actually co-sign this particular statement. Okay. So with you changing it to most unique house, I will also agree. Um, I think it will be the most unique house, but if I kept it as the most fun house, I would have disagreed only on the standing that I think and you're going to hate this. I think bug house will be the most fun, not for you, but I think they're no. going to have a lot more tricks up their sleeve in that house. I think the weekend house, like you said, unique. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like walking through a concert. I, mean, I think the music's going to be pumping. The lights are, I, I'm expecting like stage lights. Like I'm expecting crazy visuals, lasers. Like I, I expect to be like visually blown away. Um, and with, us saying the most unique house. I agree with that. It's definitely unique. I think it opens the door and the possibilities are endless for whatever road they want to navigate through for this house to finally evolve into. Um, so let's jump into this next one because this next one again might be a little bit 
Yeah, for some people, but yeah, my my hot takes a little different, a little different than yours, but it's similar. <laughs> so I'll let you kind of explain this, but I'm gonna probably piss a lot of people off. So. This hot take is Universal Monsters is getting stale. Um, it's predictable that it's going to be coming to an event. Now the stories, I get it. It's original stories. Uh, they are, you know, the icons of horror. Um, but repeatedly coming to an event, regardless of like, I, I get it. It's not the same creatures and same, same monsters every year, but having that house that we know you can pencil in a year in advance, this is going to be a monster house. That aspect taking one house of that that questionable factor is getting stale. Now, do you do you agree with this one? <laughs> All right, everybody, buckle in because this is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride. Uh, I just said I don't want to start fights with people, but I may be starting fights. Um, I don't think it's getting stale. I just think I don't I don't think it needs to get stale. I think it is stale by default. Um, I, I've said it before. I'm not a Universal Monsters guy. I don't like those movies. I mean, I get the, why they're classics. I mean, they're you know. The, the, the progenitor of the monster movie. They're the original monsters. I understand that. Um, but it's 2022, not 1932. And I, I think for today's sensibilities and for people like us, those movies have very little effect on, 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 on us in any way. Now, I'm not saying that they're, like I said before, bad movies. This is, Don't construe what I'm saying as, you know, the monster movies are terrible and they're not classics and awful. Oh, like, they're enjoyable. But... They're not the first thing I reach for when I go to watch a movie. Um, they're not anything that I really consider, you know, the the bad boys of horror. Like it's not, it's just not something that I am really reaching for. And three houses in a row is three too many. Um, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I, I do. I mean, I was okay with the first one because it was kind of like a, a compilation of all the different characters is kind of a celebration of their characters, but I think it's easy and I think it's cheap that, you know, they're going to use one of the houses every year to just give you more universal monsters. Uh, I know that's going to piss a lot of people off. I piss everybody <laughs> off. I'm probably the only human being in the planet earth that thinks this way, but um, yeah, it just doesn't excite me. It's, it's I'm, I, again, I, I like the idea of a, of a original story based in these um, based in these properties. But at the same time, I don't know. I just, it doesn't scream like, this is amazing. I can't wait for this. It's just, yeah, I don't know. I think, I, I think it's, it started getting stale for me after 19 ended. And I know I'm going to get yelled at because, well, you're, you're not, you're new to the event. You've only been to two events, so you can't really say anything and it's fine. But I just think, yeah, it's, I don't know. I would rather them do a musical artist every year then do Universal Monsters every year, if that answers your question. No, that's a hot take in itself. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, again, I don't mean to do that. I don't, I'm not trying to piss people off. That's just my opinion. I, I just, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a Universal Monsters guy. I'm not super excited about this house. I'm going to probably enjoy it for what it is, but it's not going to be one that I'm like itching to go through every time I go to the event. I think the fact that I can say I'll take it or leave it with this house, I think that, makes me say agree um i think the universal monsters house 29 was awesome compilation you got to see a little bit of everything that's super fun um i wasn't super hot on the brides one last year i felt that the storyline was just not i think the storyline was better than it was translated into the house um it was a no, little bit hard to follow like I mean, the unfortunate thing is these movies are of their time. And then and the thing is, is, and again, this is going to be an opinion that's going to piss a lot of people off, but it's, you know, you can't, you can't force today and today's lenses over something like that and expect it to work. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. at the time, those female characters were side characters to the main monsters. Like Frankenstein's wife was a side character to Frankenstein. Or, you know, the Invisible Lady was a side character of the Invisible Man. It was kind of just, like, thrown in there. Like, I, I have an issue with taking those properties and trying to make them relevant to today's world because it's. I just don't think it's going to work. I don't think it worked. I, I, I didn't like last year's house. I was not thrilled by the, the Bride of Frankenstein house. Uh, I thought that they were 
you know, it was well put together, but it just, the, the story didn't wow me. The visuals outside of maybe the very beginning didn't really wow me. Um, and I think if, again, if you're going to do a universal monsters house, they should have just left it at the compilation house and said, that's it. Or just, you know, if you're going to do this, you know, do one monster at a time and just give that monster their due. I, I don't know. I, did, I, I don't want to get too far into it because I'm going to end up like really sending somebody <laughs> off the deep end. And hey, we start with a little boo, so I'm sure they're already clicked off by now. Yeah, I don't want to get a baseball bat to the bo- to the forehead, but you know, I'm just yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think and 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 I do worry about this one this year too. Being a two part house, uh, the story sounds awesome, but again, last year the story was really good too. But I didn't have it fully translated as I walked through the house. And that's a, a, a big thing for me. I like to know the story and I, I like to be able to, to tell it just by looking at stuff. And in, I personally couldn't. Maybe it was fatigue because I had seen the that house two years in a row being HHN Light and HHN 30. So maybe that was a little bit um, affecting my opinion on it. Um, but I'll go and say it. It it. it I agree with that statement that it's getting stale because again, if we see it again next year, even if it's a different monster, it's like, uh, okay, we, you know, we did this thing. Like, even though I love creature, he's like my favorite. I'd love to see him in a house. He's if that was the only one house, I would want to see in a house to be honest. Yeah. Like I, 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 I'd still be at that point where I was like, okay, I, I, I think you could pump the brakes for a little bit and bring them back in a couple of years. And you know, you know, it doesn't have to be an every year kind of thing. Um, so this next one. So as we read it, you had a opposite opinion. I think I have an opposite hot take. So, so I don't agree with you, this one, but I have a well, different one that I. So why don't you go with yours and then I'll I'll go with the one that I written down. Cause yeah. It's, so it's just opposites. So, yeah, it's just basically the opposite. So so mine is that this year's Nightmare Fuel show will actually be underwhelming compared to last year. I think last year's was so good and so unexpected that everyone's going to go into this year and have super high expectations for it. And it's just going to fall flat compared to compared to last year. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to be a bad show necessarily. Uh, I think as long as they follow the same formula, it'll, it'll work, but I just, I'm trying to temper my expectations a little bit because I don't want to go into it thinking that, you know, oh, last year's was so good. This year's going to be amazing. And then come out, you know, just feeling like meh, that was underwhelming. I don't want to do that again because, like, you know, yeah. it's just not as good as, as last year. That's what I worry about. Yeah. And the one I had written down was Halloween Nightmare Fuel will be better than last year. Um, I think I, you are right in the sense that I had zero expectations for this. Um, it was the bottom of my list last year. I had nothing to go off of. Um, but now knowing and seeing what these these people did, um, I think it's going to I think the success of it is going to allow them to try bigger and better things. I think the positive reception is going to allow them to take more chances, uh, maybe bring more people in. Um, you know, the story simplicity can stay the same. I don't need much to it. Um, I think the the music is something that really gets me going. I think that they're going to open the door with some more music and, and change it a little bit. I think some of the stuff is going to stay the same. I think the ready or not, here we come. I, I bet that part stays. Um, so I think some music will be the same, but I think they're going to try some new stuff out. So I, I, I'm on the opposite fence of you. I think that this year's will be better than last year's. Yeah. And I also want to put that, like, I hope that you're right. And that I'm wrong. Yeah. Like I, I want it to be good or as good or better than last year's of a show. Um, it's more of a, I think that it won't be, but I'm hoping that it will be, I guess is the yeah. point. I'm saying. Like, I, I don't think that like, you know, I want it to, obviously I don't want it to be worse than last year's show. I didn't <laughs> yeah. know. I just have a feeling that it will be slightly underwhelming compared to what we expected or what we expect it to be. Cause now we have, we have higher expectations for it than we did last year. So that's, that's just yeah. my, that's just my thought on that. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll kick this next one off. Uh, ghoulish will be another letdown of a water show. Um, I disagree with this pretty hardcore. Actually. Well, not, I don't want to say super hardcore disagree but i definitely disagree with it i think that it won't be but i'll let you kind of go first yeah i then. i think the lagoon show um was was fun while it lasted um i'll be very curious to see how they translate an actual different story um onto the waterfront i like almost like what you just said i hope i'm wrong um but 
because the such the poor taste that the, the marathon of mayhem last year left in my mouth um and just it was just so boring and just oh look we have texas chainsaw as a house here's a picture of leatherface oh here's a picture of jack laughing here's some here's chan saying you know two seconds of dialogue um you know you have to be at the right position to actually see the projections properly um i think 29s was just much better they you know they had the full projections of the killer clowns you know tents they had they took they overtook the, the building landscape i think that this one is going to be just another little water show yeah i don't necessarily agree with that i think that 29 showed that they have the capability of putting together a really good projection show and i think um like if they, because they have the water effects they're going to use it for something so I, i'd rather them just put something up than not do anything um and i think that i think that being that it's a it's probably going to be a, a unique original idea not just like you said plastering a bunch of ip over some music and in water projection i think this one's actually going to be somewhat um you know original with an original storyline it doesn't have to be like a straight up you know physical movie it can just be like music and some you know various images and that sort of thing projections but that tells a story through the water and through the through the music itself so i don't think it'll be a letdown i don't think it could be any worse than what last year's was um and that's no offense <laughs> yeah. universal like i don't like, again we get it there's so much that you do you know you can't get everything right every year but i think this year the water show will definitely be a lot better than it was last year so i think it's we've kind of flipped opinions on the two shows i think <laughs> on both shows yeah. um but i definitely think that uh the, the ghoulish will be actually somewhat enjoyable. And this is coming from someone that doesn't really enjoy standing, like I said before, standing and watching, uh, you know, that projection type stuff. Like, I just think it's, it's a lot to have to stand and watch for 45 minutes. So if it's interesting and it keeps me hooked, then I'll definitely do it. Um, and I think this one will. So I'm having, or I'm, 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 I'm going into this one cautiously optimistic. I use that phrase quite a bit, but I'm definitely using that here. So, all right. Want to jump into that next one we got then? Yeah. You're going to have to kind of help me ex- understand this one a little bit. Okay. So, the San Francisco area is the wooded TV. scare zone, right? Or no, it's or Crypt TV. Crypt TV was last year. Crypt TV. All right. I, I, I don't know the names of all the scare zones. So, yeah. sh- sue me. Um, <laughs> so, the San Francisco scare zone, uh, the bottleneck, uh, or it'll, it'll, it'll continue to create a bottleneck um, and hurt the feel of the of the scare zone. Um, essentially the problem with that, with that area is it's pretty tight. Um, there's not a whole lot of lateral space. So you're kind of squeezed in and because it's so open, they have to kind of like just put like pockets of things in that area. So, um, with the, the, the number of people coming through there, both directions, cause it's obviously not funneled one way or the other. It's, you know, people come one way people go the other way. So there's definitely a bottleneck that's created there. Uh, unlike the other scare zones, which they're a little bit wider. Um, or if you're talking in terms of like the wooded scare zone, generally most people are going one direction out of that one. They're either leaving in the, at the end of the night or going in at the beginning of the night. But with the San Francisco one, they're definitely coming, you know, that all night long, it's people coming in one way, going the other way. So you're, you're not only dealing with scare actors and, and the different things that are happening in the scare zone, but you're also dealing with people coming at you. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely a bottleneck there, um, which, uh, you know, can for certain people hurt, hurt the, you know, the immersion or make it feel less, um, you know, make, make it feel less immersive, I guess is the word I'm, you know using so yeah i i personally i i I don't necessarily disagree but i also don't agree with the hurting the feel of it um the bottleneck is definitely there like that is 100 true like that one for whatever reason like i said the people coming both directions um just the the overall size of the scare zone definitely creates the worst bottleneck of all of them um but i don't think personally that it for me it hurts the feel of that scare zone in any way or hurts the immersion of that scare zone in any way. I think unfortunately last year crypt TV just wasn't a good enough uh, property to put there. I don't think there was enough going on. It felt kind of like a, 
like a felt kind of like a, a museum exhibit, I guess. Like, like a photo to, op session. Yeah, it was almost like a photo op. There really wasn't a whole lot of immersion going on just from the theme. Um, but that was more because of that and less because of you know the bottleneck that's created there. Um in twenty nine with this with the with the um um oh my god, the um Rob Zombie sorry, sorry mm-hmm. Jesus swear getting old is terrible on uh, the rob zombie scare zone i definitely felt the bottleneck more but i also think part of that was because it was so disorienting in general with the music blasting and the girls yeah, dancing a and all these different things it's um so again definitely felt the bottleneck but i didn't i don't think that it hurt the immersion of the of the scare zone i actually enjoyed that scare zone that was probably one of my favorite scare zones um mm-hmm. that year so i mean again it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have a bunch of sexy ladies dancing and all that sounds really misogynistic but i'm just saying from a guy's perspective <laughs> that didn't hurt at all um so i don't know i don't know how do you feel about it do you think that it really hurts that bad or or, or are you i disagree with this one i oh, i think okay. especially this year i think they're gonna finally learn um i think last year the way it was set up was covid related uh, they had people kind of up on stages to to be you know out of direct contact um and it was a you know a fun way to to try to combat what we were dealing with last year, but I think that this year they, they have it figured out. I think I haven't, I haven't been to the park yet to see where these actually stages are set up, but it looked like from the pictures that there's, there is a stage with like a cauldron set up. That's kind of pushed to the wayside out of the path. So it won't be as much structures in the middle. I mean, last year we had the birch um, like set, like just smack dab in the middle of the pathway, which is already narrow. So that was just not a great plan of attack. Um, but I think this year they're going to kind of learn from their mistakes and, and space some stuff out a little bit. Um, so I'll jump into this next one. Uh, hot take Blumhouse. Actually, I don't even know how hot this is, but we'll just go with it. Uh, Blumhouse <laughs> won't work again. Uh, the last time Blumhouse was here, it wasn't well received. Um, mashing the black phone and freaky together. I think they, you know, I, I, I would prefer them to have been just one house themselves. Um, either do just a freaky house or just the black phone house. Um, you know, the mashup houses can work in certain situations. Um, icons, great way that a mashup worked. It, it made a cohesive story. They were all in Fear's Lantern. There was a purpose for them to be there. Whereas if you look at a house like uh, Scary, um, if you weren't like an HHN fan or knew a lot of the lore, um, a lot of these scenes would just seem to be very random, out of place, and then leaving you to wonder what is going on. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't care about storylines or, or, or anything like that, then it won't really affect you that much. But having like too many houses inside of a house is tricky, let alone when these two properties are completely differing from one another. Whereas the black phone is more of a thriller than a horror. And it's very dark in, in nature um, and, and subject matter. And then freaky is like just a straight slasher comedy um i'd be i'd I'd more would say comedy before slasher so it's it's gonna be interesting to see how they tie these together um hope i'm wrong but i will agree with this one that the blumhouse the horrors of blumhouse won't work again sorry i was muted um (laughs) yes and no so i think for me the hot take here is less that it won't work again um, it's more specifically this house, this mashup isn't going to work. Um, again, I don't want to give away too much from, from our hype, up, hype episode, but I don't know how well the black phone is going to translate to a haunted house. Um, freaky. I've said it before. Um, I think it will have aspects that will work. It will create set pieces that are cool and memorable, but as far as the house is concerned as a whole, I just, I, don't know how well this is going to tie together. Uh, I hope again, like you said, I think I hope I'm wrong. I hope that it, it does work out and it surprises everybody. Um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And like, and, and like I said, from everything you've said and from what I've heard, the Blumhouse houses for the most part, haven't been great or well received. So mm-hmm. I can't imagine doing another one is going to change the opinion of many people. So we'll, I guess we'll see, but yeah, I'm, I guess in a way I agree with this particular statement, but I think it's more specifically this house in general. Yeah. I, 
I think Freaky would have been a better standalone house than putting it with the black phone. And I like both See, properties. See, that's the thing for me. Like, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I think that like, I don't even know if Freaky alone would have worked. I think Freaky has to be a part of a Blumhouse compilation. I don't really know of any Blumhouse movies, specifically Blumhouse movies, that would work as an individual standalone house. I just don't think there's enough meat on the bones to really make a, a, a cohesive 10 to 12 room house. Again, mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm not one that builds and designs these. So maybe I'm just talking <laughs> on my ass and I'm crazy, but I, that's the thing. So like, I don't think black phone is going to really tie in well with freaky, but I don't think freaky would work on, on its own. If that makes any sense. Um, yeah. I feel like freaky would have been better with like a happy death day two or something like that. Yeah. Like Freaky and Happy Death Day together, but don't do Freaky and Black Phone because the two movies are so different. But I yeah, they talked about this in the past. I don't want to reiterate things we've already talked about, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, at the end of the day, I agree with the statement. Um, and to go even further than that, I'm not sure that we're going to see a Blumhouse house after this one. I think this may be the last Blumhouse house we see in a very long time. Yeah, I mean, that hot take. That is a, that is a hot take. I. That's tough to say. Who knows what they're going to be putting out for movies. Um, But I mean, if it's not well received again, then maybe it's time to cut the ties. Um, Okay, so this will be a fun one. (laughs) This is a... I'm going to call this... I don't think it's that hot. Because it's really not a hot take. I think think this is hopeful. Hopeful. Yeah, yeah. Um, So we talked previously on... um, our episode where we discussed the announcements for the houses. And we mentioned that scarecrow um, is, is like creating like a barn within a scare zone where you walk through and it's almost like a little mini house. So one of the takes is that scarecrow is going to revolutionize scare zones by creating this weird hybrid where it's, it's still a scare zone, but there's that house aspect where you're walking through structures and walking into like mini houses. Um, so this is with the hope that maybe this is something that like continues as long as it doesn't fall into that San Francisco bottleneck, as long as it's like doesn't create too much of a line and there's still enough passageway for people to go through. Um, you know, is there a way to add miniature houses into scare zones? I mean, there's there's plenty of space in some of them. That's for sure. I mean, where they have over on like, um, I mean, New York or Hollywood, there's enough space to put big structure up and create like a mini house. So is, is Scarecrow going to, you know, kickstart something here and, and, and change these scare zones for the, for the better going forward. Um, I agree. I, I think that if, as long as it's successful, I think this is something that we could possibly see again down the road. Um, being in, really any of them except maybe San Francisco might be too tight to put something up. Um, and the, and the front, um, it's like the, the very front entrance might be a little bit too tight there, but I mean, New York would work. Central park is, is clearly going to work because that's, I think where they're aiming to have this thing. Um, Hollywood would work. Um, so what do you think? Do you think this is something that going forward, we might see a little bit more of, um, I agree that it's definitely going to, to change what we've what we've come become or what we've come to know about scare zones. I think the it may prove to them that they can do a lot more with them than they have done in the past. Um my only my only reservation about seeing a lot of this in the future is it has to be able or it has to be easily dismantled because the park is open during the day for regular for regular usage. So mm-hmm. they can't just leave big structures up in the middle of the park during the day um so it has to be at least easily concealed or not concealed but more so just like opened up so that people don't you know people can actually get to and from various aspects of the park so um yes i mean if it if it's successful i could definitely see this being used more in the future and again we don't really know exactly what's going to be in this scare zone but if it if it's going to be what it sounds like it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, I do agree that it's going to be a huge evolution of what we're used to seeing with scare zones. I just don't know how much they're going to do in the future, um, how often it'll happen. Um, just because 
I can't imagine the la- the labor that it takes to have to move these things in and out of the way so people can get to and from things in the park during the day. Yeah. Um, oh, you want to take this one? No, because I completely disagree with it. But uh, <laughs> so the take is is that horrors of Halloween, this particular event, the scare zone itself, and just all aspects of this amazing event that it's, it's leading up to be, um, is going to be a letdown coming off of the house wicked growth. Um, I don't agree with this at all, only because I don't think you can compare the two. I think the house itself was its own contained thing and it was really well done. But what we're doing this year is celebrating a character that was created from that house and, you know, basically theming the event around him and around um, the, just the idea of Halloween as a, as a holiday. So I can't imagine that there's a whole lot to be let down. I don't think this event's going to let down anybody in any way. Uh, I could be wrong. I mean, some people have some weird, have some weird opinions about things, you know, Seamus, for example. <laughs> um, but I don't think that this specifically is a, uh, a thing that's going to happen. I, I can't imagine being let down at all based on what I thought of Wicked Growth compared to what this particular event's going to happen. Why do you, do you agree with this statement? I, I you, 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 you wrote it. So I don't know. I mean, there's a good chance you, you do agree with this, but I, I do not know. agree with this one. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> you. I think, I think that this is going to be a fun. I'm curious. I'm curious to see where his story goes. Cause like we talked about in the past, Wicked Growth was the story of his birth. You know, we didn't get pumpkin Lord until the end of the house. Um, so I'm going to be curious to see um, if he's like a mic'd up character and he's talking, um, burping on the crowd, giving them that smell. Um, I think that's what we're going to be going with. I think, like you said, it's him kind of taking over the event and, and turning everything into Halloween, um, which I am all for. We have stated that a long time coming, that this is something that we expected. You know, HH and 31 was just made too much sense to make it not all about Halloween. Um, I think that this is a home run of a scare zone. I don't think this is going to miss. Um, this is giving us a new icon. I don't care. I mean, they don't have to come out and say he's an icon. Um, according to the spooky empire panel we went to, you know, there are characters and I think it was um, Mike Iello that stated, you know, are, are, are some of these characters that we have never s- deemed icons? Does that make them not iconic? You know, Boris Schuster, is he not, iconic so if he if he is does that not make him an icon i think pumpkin lord falls into that category as well as you know you don't have to they don't have to come out and have that proper nomenclature and say the icon this year is pumpkin lord i think just by saying he's taking over the event and having him do what he's doing i think is enough evidence to say he's an icon at this point yeah i mean again i said before I think that he is going to be the next icon. I think this is, it's too, I think this confirms it. I think the fact that he's here. Yeah. I think that he's here. He's, he's, he's taking over the event just like Jack has done in the past. And other icons have kind of been themed around them in the past. I think he's definitely the next anointed icon. I think he's not going to be just like Mike said, you know, Oh, he's iconic, right? He's an iconic character. No, I think he really is a, capital I icon at this point. Um, And I'm excited for it. I think he deserves it. There's not a lot of characters every year that deserve it. I think he deserves it. I think it's just, he, I keep saying he, but it, (laughs) the pumpkin Lord is definitely a deserving character to be, you know, considered an actual universal uh, icon. So I'm excited. I think that's true. I don't think this is going to be a letdown in any way. I think we're, I, I really do truly think this, this event might be considered the best event ever put ever put together out of any of them well that's going to lead us right into our next topic uh hhn 31 overall is going to make it and i'll change it from hard to impossible to top for hhn 32 damn (laughs) so hhn 31 is going to be so good overall that it is impossible to top for the next event do you agree with that you put it that way i don't agree with that i i just like you, just like you had stated with the Blumhouse take that you know we don't know what they're what they're going to be able to do in, in the future. So 
if it's if you're saying is it going to be impossible to top i, I don't want to say that for sure um just because who knows um i do think it's going to come close i think it's going to be in, it's going to be insanely difficult if if not impossible it's going to be insanely difficult for them to top this year's event um i think just all the stars are lining up. It's the 31st event. It's, you know, completely based around just traditional Halloween. Um, there's going to be something for everyone at this event. I think that in a lot of events, there's, there's houses that people like, but there's never necessarily, there's, there's not always going to be something that everyone can enjoy. I think this one is going to have, you know, something, there's going to be a house for everybody. Everyone will have their own favorite house. There is not going to be one clear, like I said, on another episode this week, there's not going to be a clear cut best house winner this year. I think they're all going to vie for that title. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be really, really hard for them to come up with something that, that tops this, this event. And again, maybe I'm being super premature with that, but I, uh, everything I've seen so far. I will agree with my statement. 31 is going to be so good overall that it is going to be impossible for 32 to take out only because I want to bait them into catering the entire event around me. <laughs> <laughs> Unless HHN 32 comes out and says, we have Season of the Witch, we have Friday the 13th, we have Goosebumps, we have Misfits. And unless it's like HHN 32 Nick's picks, then it's <laughs> going to be impossible to top. I mean, Halloween, you know, get, diving into that spirit of Halloween, um, and, it, and, and they're doing it, you know, they haven't said it, but, you know, they're doing it because it is HHN 31, October 30, like Halloween. It makes perfect sense. So, like, I just because of the, the, the numerical order that this has fallen, that it is so Halloween heavy. I don't think that's going to be, you know, that's not something we've seen in the past. You know, the, 80, the 80s trend of 29 was amazing, and that's something that will tug at my heartstrings again if they do it again. If they do, like, a straight 90s thing, again they will but like they don't necessarily all have these overarching themes but the fact that this one is like purely halloween is just so right up our alley that i don't know if they're going to do a cohesive theme that will cater towards me as close as it is this time around i, th- that I think sense. that i think that this event is going to tug at everybody's basically anyone can go to this Black event hearts. and and yeah and just feel that feeling you got as a kid the first time you went trick or treating or the first time you saw a jack o lantern or you saw a house done up in 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 halloween decorations and stuff like that like it's timeless in a way it's one of those things that like someone that was you know a kid in the 40s might get the same effect that someone that was a kid in the 90s like i think it's just it's a timeless it's a timeless feeling you get. Like you think about like with Christmas, like there's just certain things about Christmas that will never be outdated, I guess is in a way. So things like, you know, on Halloween specifically, like, you know, that, that idea of jack-o'-lanterns and kids trick or treating and that fall weather and the, and, and the leaves, and just basically everything you think about that happens yeah. to come with that time period. Even, you, even, even when you're a, a, a demon that lives in these super hot, ridiculously, tropical locales like we do and we don't get to experience fall anymore um Mm -hmm. you still you still in a way can relate to that even if you've never lived in an area that has a fall like that um it's just there's something about it i guess it's, it's hard to really explain um maybe it comes from watching halloween movies growing up or you know the great big the great pumpkin or whatever, Charlie Brown, you know, stuff like that, yeah. where it just gives you that timeless Norman Rockwell type feeling. I think this is what you're going to get from this event. And I think that's, what's going to make it so hard to top is that you are, they're going to, I mean, maybe they were just waiting for, for, for HHN 31 to do this type of thing, which seems like it would make sense because it's just, it's too perfect. Um, again, I, 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 I see where you're coming from as far as being impossible to top with next with, with next year's event. I don't think it, I don't think it's necessarily impossible. I just don't think it's very probable. I think it's just going to be really hard. I think, I think no matter what they do, they're unfortunately going to be somewhat let down <laughs> for next year it's, after this year. It's going to be tough it's to gonna follow be really this hard. Up. 
All right. Do you have any more hot takes at all, or did we kind of cover most of them? Did you come up with any more? Those are pretty hot. I had, like I said, I had a few that came up as we were talking about these ones. Um, um, I think the only other hot takes, um, I mean, I guess, I guess one hot take will be that, um, the busiest, the busiest waits for houses will not be any of the IPs. Uh, I don't think on average there will be, uh, a, an IP house that has a longer wait than some of the original houses. I think the original houses, this is the year for them to kind of step up and take their role. And they're the ones that are going to be the busiest on any given night. Um, in particular, like dead man's pier, I think is going to be a mm-hmm. hundred plus minutes. And we're going to get into like some of these, some of these times in our specific episode for that. But I think that like, I, I, I don't see any, any one of the four IPs being um, at least on average, anywhere as busy as the other, as the original houses. I, I, I truly, I truly think that I think this is the year for any, like I said before, when we did our, our episode describing the event that as, as really as, as announced. Um, I think that this is the event for any of those original junkies that just love original houses. This is the event to be at because there's going to be some bomb houses this year. So we're getting other than that. I think everything else you came up with is pretty hot. <laughs> um, I don't agree with all of it. <laughs> I probably have some sizzling. Some, I probably have some haters now after my universal monsters take, but you know what? Them. So be it. M's the breaks, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, we can dis- agree to disagree, I guess. Uh, and don't fight me, please. I don't want to fight. I don't like fighting. <laughs> I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So, um, nope. Other than that, I think, uh, I think, I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, that wraps it up for our special Monday episode. We will be back again tomorrow, Tuesday, August 30th, with our wait times over or under estimation episode. We'll dive into each house. Uh, give a st- a certain number and see if uh see where we're going to be sitting at the end of the year if we're over or under for certain uh certain uh houses which is a good segue off of your last uh your last take yeah yeah it's a good little segue all right well until next time which again is tomorrow this is nick and this is the heat miser Hmm. don't kill me little boo happy haunts And again, I would just like to thank Vampire Stepdad for letting us use his music for our intro and outro music. So if you would, just go check him out, Spotify, Facebook. Again, that is Vampire Stepdad.